So uh, obviously you write your play in the, the, in the, the third grade. Um, it's going to go on to, to be a tremendous success. No doubt it's a straightforward path from there to becoming an author, except <laughs> You, you you go to the University of Southern, Southern California to write for film, but somehow you end up getting an MBA and, and working 20 years in pharmaceuticals. Where's the right turn there? What happened? Yeah, it's it's exactly like it's exactly like you said. So I, I went out to the University of Southern California thinking I would go into film writing. I went in as undeclared and, you know, learned pretty quickly that, um, you know, without being related to Steven Spielberg or coming in with this huge portfolio getting into the USC film school was was highly un unrealistic. Um, I just heard recently that it was harder to get into the USC film school than it was to get into an Ivy League university. Um, nevertheless, I was able to take many film classes while I was there and, and did a great deal of studying film. Um, and then there was a couple other changes that happened in my life and and I loved being visiting the West Coast. I didn't think I was I was, I'm an East Coaster. I'm from Jersey. I'm a Jersey girl. And the West Coast wasn't someplace that I wanted to live for a long time. So I ended up transferring back East. I was closer to my family, came to the University of Delaware. And the only way I could graduate in four years, it was four years plus a summer session, was to be an English major, um, which wasn't something that was, that was in the plan. But I went with it, um, picked up a French minor because I felt like that was going to do great things for me in my life. Um, and then with an, uh, an English major, wasn't sure what I was going to do, so figured I would go to law school. Well, I don't know if I want to go to law school exactly. I'll take the LSATs, but maybe I'll also take the GMATs. Uh, and throughout the course of my childhood, you know, growing up a girl in 70s and 80s, at that time in New Jersey, girls were steered more towards English and history, and I didn't have an extensive math background. Um, so I didn't expect that I was going to do very well on the GMATs. I did some practicing, tried to learn calculus, um, but I figured the LSATs would really be where my expertise would lie. Um, and turns out the girl who's not a numbers girl did really well on the GMATs, got into the um, master's program at University of Delaware, uh, ended up loving economics, got an internship at a very small local pharmaceutical company that ended up merging with a really big pharmaceutical company, got another job and another job, and had uh, a wonderful 20-year career there. And, and even thereafter, even after I left, I still do consulting with different companies. Um, writing became my plan B or my exit plan well into my career, I started getting back into writing. Um, and then, you know, small projects became bigger projects and became bigger projects. And then um, I just thought I had one to query a literary agent who liked it. And, and that became Just Add Magic. You mentioned the, the, the minor in French, which is not particularly helpful, but you are the author of Lost in Paris. So <laughs> the long yes. game there, I assume that, did, that that came in handy a little bit. Yeah, I've always been kind of a francophone and uh, without having been to Paris until you know, until my adult life, I didn't have a passport until I was like 30. Um, and that was just for work because I would travel um, with that company would send me all over the place, which broaden my world uh, considerably. Um, and and then I got to go to go to France, a couple different places in France throughout my career there. And that book was originally called Pardon My French. Um, and it was it was going to be like a rock and roll mystery that that took place in France. And um, and that's how I was able to get that firsthand exposure to, to Paris. So what I'm hearing, and, and I think the facts bear this out, is you have you are a woman of many talents. You could go in just about any direction that you want, uh, and 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 probably find success. So I am assuming for 20 years in pharmaceuticals, you're not pining for a different career the whole time. You're finding fulfillment. You're you're living a a, a perfectly fine life uh, that you're that you're enjoying. Are there times where like one day I'm going to write, or was that not even uh, on the on the radar? Um, it, it was always on the radar and always kind of way in the back, but I, I did, I, I loved my career, you know, I still like, and I still do. Um, I, I think I was good at it. I worked really hard at it and I wanted to do well and excel. Um, so much so that I worked 
a lot. I worked a lot in the office. I worked a lot at home and I traveled a lot. Um, and I became a workaholic, a workaholic. And I, I think that's a real, I think it's a real thing, you know, give me a rush, if, uh, if you will. And it also then has a cost on the other end. I wasn't spending a lot of time with, with friends, not as much time with my family. I had three small children um, and it was taking a toll on my physical and mental health. And I needed to carve out more time for me and some more space for my brain. And that ended up manifesting itself as I'm going to take a writing class um, and, you know, would do small assignments. And then I wanted to take on bigger assignments. I'm someone who's just really driven in whatever I'm doing, whether it be pharmaceuticals or writing or running or, or whatever. Um, and and that's that's how that veered off to do more writing. And, and then I ended up remembering how much I really loved it. So when you switched to writing, were you able to find a better uh, work-life balance or were you just a workaholic now for writing, but able to do it at home at least? <laughs> Doing it at home is, is huge because I can multitask at the same time. And um, while I still get, am very driven uh, for my work and, uh, and I make goals for myself and I have many projects that I work on at the same time, I definitely work at it fewer hours a week. Um, and since I don't have a boss or someone who I'm accountable to except myself who, you know, I hold myself to very high accountabilities. Uh, I can say, you know what, I'm just fried. I'm going to take today off or the week off or the month off or two months off. And, and I've done that. I've taken very long breaks to do other things or to recharge my creative battery. And I have the flexibility to do that where I didn't, before.